The secret to winning on social media right now is frequency. Now, I probably should have dragged that out a little bit, but there you have it. Now, if you wanna learn why frequency is so important and how to actually use it in your social media strategy to grow your business, get more clients and customers and make all of your social media marketing 10 times more effective, then stick around. I've got some good stuff for you. All right, let's get to it. All right, first things first. When I'm talking about frequency, I'm not talking about energy or vibrations or power of attraction or anything like that. Rather, I'm talking about it in its most literal and mathematical sense. Frequency is the rate at which something occurs or is repeated over a particular period of time. Or in other words, the number of times your business is showing up in front of people on social media. Now there's a number of different ways you can get your business to show up in front of more people on social media, including the strangely popular brute force method. This is where you do everything and try to be everywhere, cranking out a hundred plus pieces of content a day and trying to be both present and active on a dozen or more different social media platforms. And that my friend, is bananas. For 99% of businesses out there, this brute force method strategy is overwhelming and ineffective. So I'm gonna give you a better way. But first, why does frequency even matter? And why is this the secret to winning on social media right now? Great questions, my friend. Great questions. So here's the deal, or the secret, if you will, that makes frequency so important. And then we'll get into the tactics to actually leverage it in your business to make all of your social media marketing 10 times more effective. The first thing that makes frequency so important and so effective is that we, as a human species, have been programmed and conditioned and essentially hardwired to associate frequency with trust. What this means is that the more times you see something, the more likely you are to trust it. After all, if you keep seeing something over and over and over again, Surely it must be okay. Or at the very least, at least it won't try to eat us. The next thing is all about touch points. And the studies show that it takes somewhere between seven and 14 different touch points with a customer in order to get them to take action, or ultimately to buy. So your goal as an agent of change is to try to show up in front of people enough times to essentially get them to take action. Study after study after study constantly shows that most business owners, most entrepreneurs, most marketers are failing to meet the minimum requirements, those minimum number of touch points in order to get somebody to take action. It's like they pop in and say hi and then disappear never to be heard from again. And then they wonder why their social media isn't working. Next, it's important to understand the ever decrease attention spans of the 21st century modern human. Studies now show that the average human attention span is a whopping eight seconds. For context, a goldfish has a nine second attention span. So we're not doing too good. Hey, look, a squirrel. Point is, as great as you and your business are, well, people have low attention spans and they forget things. They get busy, they keep scrolling, and they move on. Obviously, one solution is to try to create better, more interesting, and more engaging content. But the other solution is simply to show up more often, reminding them of your greatness and showing them about your ability and availability to help them solve their problems. But like all things, there's a right and a wrong way to do this. The wrong way, as I've already covered, is to try to do everything and to try to be everywhere and completely burning yourself out in the process. Right way, on the other hand, well, let's talk about that now. When it comes to social media and marketing, and business actually, well, the single biggest mistake you want to avoid is doing the wrong things in the wrong place for the wrong people. I appreciate that sounds completely obvious, and yet I see the same mistake being done every single day. The flip side of this then, of course, and the secret to actually winning on social media is doing the right things in the right place for the right people. This is the foundation of all marketing strategy. Right things, right place, right people. The right people are your ideal target market or your ideal customer avatar. These are the people that you most want to serve, the people that would love you, love what you do, and are happy to pay you for the true value you provide. Your first goal when it comes to succeeding on social media or with marketing in general is to try to identify who this ideal target market really is. Look for similarities and common traits among your top clients and top customers. Things like demographic details, like age, gender, income, and occupation. Are there overlapping traits in geographic details like different cities or states or provinces or countries that they live in? Or are there common traits or sort of personality characteristics that are psychographic details like what values or attitudes or lifestyles do they all seem to have in common? And by all, I don't mean 
all, I mean your top customers, your top clients, and the ones that you really want to attract more of. Once you've got the right people identified, it's time to move on to the next step, which is the right things. The right things in the context of social media marketing are the pieces of content you're going to create that speak directly to your ideal target market. Your goal here isn't so much to explain or educate, educate. Education, it's important. Anyway, your goal here isn't strictly education, although that is an incredibly important part of creating content, but rather it's less about teaching and more about letting them know that they have been seen and that they've been heard and that you understand their pains and their problems and what they're going through. You see, customers and clients don't buy when they understand, they buy when they feel understood. This is why it's incredibly important to really understand your target market well, including what I call their miracles and their miseries. Their miracles are all of their hopes and their dreams and their wants and their desires and their aspirations and all the things that your business can help them achieve. Their miseries, on the other hand, are all of their pains and their problems and their fears and their frustrations and all of the things they're trying to move away from that your business can help them move away from. Once you've got a good handle on that, it's time to move on to the next piece which is the right place. The right place is one of the most simple concepts to grasp, and yet it's also one of the biggest places I see most entrepreneurs and business owners make the biggest mistakes, losing them a ton of time and energy and money. You see, when it comes to your ideal target market, odds are pretty good that the vast majority of them, 80% at least, are probably all congregated on one or two or maybe three different social media platforms at most. If you're serving a market of say people age 35 and under, well, take a look at Instagram and probably YouTube. If you're serving a market of 35 and older, take a look at Facebook and also probably YouTube. If your target market is made up mostly of women, well, take a look at Pinterest. And if you're in the B2B or business to business space, well then obviously you're gonna wanna look at LinkedIn. The point here is that there's no need to do everything and be everywhere because your ideal target market they're not everywhere. Rather, they're on just one or two or maybe three different platforms. So any time or money or energy you invest going after all the platforms that they're not active and not present on is a complete waste. I call these other platforms where your target market isn't active and isn't present the marketing wasteland. And simply avoiding the wasteland is one of the fastest ways to improve the results of all of your marketing. The key though to really pulling this all together is to make sure that you're following a strategic marketing plan. And this is why the next thing you're gonna wanna do is check out the video I have linked up right here on how to create a marketing plan. So make sure to do that now and I'll see you in the next episode. Also, when we are talking about model, which we're doing right here, it's important to take a step back and really take a look at the entire customer journey. What you wanna do here, rather what you don't wanna do,